Now we will talk about question number fifth. So, it is explain the difference between pure and polluted air ok. What is question number fifth? It is explain the difference between the pure and the polluted air. So, if we talk about the pure air see children, you know uh, actually the composition of the air is fixed is not it like it is having approx. So, the composition of the air is fixed approximately approx we can say 78 percent of uh, you know nitrogen and 21 percent of oxygen is not it and 1 percent of all the other gases uh, it can be uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide ok. So, all these gases can be uh, in this 1 percent ok. So, if this composition changes ok, if this composition changes and the gases like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide all these and particulate matter all these get increased then we say that the air is polluted is not it. So, what can be the difference between the pure and the polluted air children in the pure air the you know the uh, all these oxides uh, would not be there ok or even if it is there it will be at very very it will be in all uh, in very lesser amount is not it. So, if the composition of the air changes that means it is polluted is not it. So, we know the composition approx 78 percent of nitrogen, 1 percent of oxygen and 1 percent of all the different gases may be argon, may be carbon dioxide ok, uh, hydrogen and all such kind of gases are there. But when the quantity of oxides especially sulfur dioxide, uh, nitrogen dioxide, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and even methane it get increased that we will say and particulate matter if it increase then we will say that air is getting polluted or air is polluted is not it. So, let us write the answer number fifth. The composition of air is approx 78 percent of nitrogen twenty one percent of oxygen and 1 percent of other gases changes then it does not remains pure air in impure air the uh, amount of carbon dioxide ok carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide methane particulate matter
increases we can say not able to write here we can say that air is polluted okay so what i have written children the composition of air approx okay so 78% of nitrogen 21% of oxygen and 1% of other gases changes then it doesn't remains pure air okay in impure air the amount of carbon dioxide carbon monoxide sulfur dioxide nitrogen dioxide i didn't write okay methane particulate matter increases we say that air is polluted okay and it will obviously uh, such kind of air will be very very harmful for us and will be responsible for many different kinds of diseases also okay so this was our question number i think so fifth yes this is question number fifth now we'll talk about question number 6 okay so now answer 6 so question number 6 i am reading children explain circumstances leading to acid rain how does acid rain affect us okay so what is the meaning of acid rain first of all children see when the uh, fossil fuels are burn okay when the fossil fuels are burn like petrol diesel coal so lot of oxides are being released okay now when these oxides are released these oxides becomes a part of the atmosphere and raises it goes up okay in the atmosphere now when it rains this uh, the, the these uh, oxides get dissolved in the rain water and it comes down along with the rain water and uh you will read in one uh, you know one of the chapters or if it is already done metal and normally it is done in essay 1 okay so uh if you uh, remember that chapter so what is happening when oxides uh, is being uh, dissolved in water acids are formed now these acid uh, okay these why i am using saying these that means when the these oxides get dissolved in water different acids will be formed so all uh, acids okay when they these acids comes down in uh, along with rain water what is that what is happening children now these acids uh, will be obviously corrosive in nature it is going to uh, harm not only living thing but also non living thing isn't it so so uh, when all these oxides get get mixed up with the rain water it comes down okay so uh, we all know acid is what how it is it is corrosive in nature and definitely acid rain is also corrosive in nature and it you no know, not only affect the uh, living things but it also affect the non living thing and how does it affect children see when we talk about non living things so what is happening uh it uh, corrodes the uh you know soil statues uh, it's harmful it uh, it's very very harmful for the aquatic animals also if we talk about living things so in this way both living thing as well as non living thing both are uh, you know affected so uh, that is a the reason these uh, you know these uh, oxides we should we, we can say should not be increased if this get increase and in what is happening children it becomes a part of acid rain by getting dissolving well you know what happens it get dissolved in the rain water and then it comes down and it uh, as i just now we have discussed that it is very very harmful for both living things and non living things okay so once again we'll revise what is the meaning of acid rain children when the um, fossil fuels like maybe the uh petrol diesel okay coal all these are burned so what is happening children 
it give rise to various kinds of oxides when these oxides like nitrogen dioxide carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide okay when these get increased in the atmosphere okay and obviously these are going to go up it will get dissolved in the rain water along with the rain water it will come down and this is only what this is only acid rain acid rain is very very corrosive okay it's very very harmful for the aquatic animals also because of uh, acid rain many aquatic uh, you know uh, life uh, comes to an end so again what is the thing we should use these kind of fuels very carefully isn't it so let's talk about question number 6 i'll be writing the answer i'll just read the question again explain circumstances leading to acid rain how does acid rain affect us isn't it so i'll just write the answer student on burning of fossil fuels like petrol diesel coal etc oxides becomes the part of nature and get dissolved when it rains and comes down as the acid rain okay and second part is no they have not asked how does yeah they have asked how does acid rain affect us okay so acid rain is very corrosive okay for both living and non living things okay now see i don't have place over here to write but we'll discuss it so on burning of fossil fuels like petrol diesel coal etc oxides become the part of the nature what does this line mean children that mean oxides are released okay oxides are released now and get dissolved when it rains and comes down as the acid rain so how if you want to write in the simple language how we will write children that on burning of fossil fuels or even on burning fossil fuels you can even remove off on burning fossil fuels like petrol diesel coal etc oxides are released okay and these oxides get dissolved in rain water and comes down along with the rain now acid rain is very very corrosive in nature and it affects both living things as well as no non living things so how does it affect non living things and living things children if we talk about non living thing it uh, corrodes the what children the marble or we can say statues okay buildings and again uh, it decreases the fertility of the soil and when we talk about the living things Uh, because of acid rain many aquatic lives comes to an end so this also has to be mentioned over here but as there is no place i'll have to rub that side so um, we have discussed this thing so you can i think you can write this answer isn't it so this answer is incomplete two three lines are left over here so what is that it affects the monuments okay monuments statues i am right now soil okay aquatic life 
now please detail this thing so this answer will be over this was question number 6 and this question was totally about the acid rain that what is the meaning of acid rain and how does it affects the other uh, you know how does it affect the living things as well as the non living things ok. So, when the fuels are used their fuels are burned. So, what is happening children in these fuels what is present carbon is present when carbon is burning that means what is happening carbon dioxide is being produced likewise all different kinds of oxides are produced and when these oxides are produced. So, what is happening children it goes up becomes a part of the atmosphere and when it rains along with the rain water it comes down how it get dissolved in the rain water and it is very very corrosive and it decreases the fertility of soil it corrodes the monuments ok it corrodes the statues ok and it also affects the aquatic life in very very negative way. So, this was our question number 6 student now we will discuss about the question number 7 ok. Ok, now we will talk about question number 7, um, which of the following is not a greenhouse gas ok, which of the following is not a greenhouse gas. So, options are carbon dioxide, sulphur dioxide, methane and nitrogen. So, we know oxides are what? They are uh, greenhouse gases is not it? So, carbon dioxide is an oxide and this a uh, greenhouse gas, sulphur dioxide is then even we know methane. Hmm? So, what is left nitrogen and just now before uh, one question we have discussed that nitrogen is the part of the natural composition of air that means 78 percent of nitrogen is present in the atmosphere and then it could not be the reason for the uh, greenhouse effect is not it. So, what which gas is that children which gas is not responsible for greenhouse effect or which is a gas which is not a greenhouse gas. So, it is uh, nitrogen. So, this one is question number 7 and the answer is nitrogen ok. So, this is not the greenhouse gas in fact this is the it is present in 78 percent and it is very very important part of the uh, our atmosphere ok. So, now talk about we will talk about question number 8 children describe the greenhouse effect in your own words ok. So, what is the question children describe the greenhouse effect in your own words. See children actually now what is happening there are uh, different gases ok which are known as the greenhouse gases. First of all they are talking about greenhouse effect. Ok, so what is here in this answer we have to tell we have to discuss about the greenhouse gases its effect ok. So, actually children you know uh, carbon dioxide just now we have discussed sulphur dioxide methane all these are greenhouse gases ok. So, what these gases do children these gases trap the uh, sunlight ok these gases trap the sunlight and do not allow the sunlight to go back and become the you know to skip to skip. No, it becomes the part of the uh, what we can say it, it increases the heat now. Actually you know for our survival this is very very important children. We all know one use of carbon dioxide that carbon dioxide is very very useful for plants. But if we talk about the other use what is the other use that is also equally important children the other use of carbon dioxide is it the it traps the sunlight ok it traps the sunlight and do not allow it to go back ok. When carbon dioxide traps the heat ok sunlight is being trapped means what I am talking about the heat the heat is being trapped ok. So, when heat is trapped so, what is what is happening children the the temperature of the earth get increased. Now, you will say how is it important children we have discussed this thing uh, in the explanation of the chapter also children it is very very important to keep that temperature which we have on the surface of the earth. 
you know if carbon dioxide is uh, you know if carbon dioxide uh, is removed from the atmosphere which is for few seconds I know it cannot be done and leave one part that is very very important for the plants ok. If carbon dioxide is removed for, uh, from the surface of the earth for some time the temperature of the earth will get decreased ok the temperature of the earth will get decreased why because carbon dioxide has the capacity or the tendency to trap the heat of the sun ok when the carbon dioxide traps the heat of the sun the temperature of the earth increases it is very very useful for us because it creates survival conditions for us but see now because of the use of fossil fuels these gases ok these greenhouse gases are increasing now when these gases are increasing we know the characteristic feature of the greenhouse gases these gases traps the sun's heat ok these gases traps the sun's heat and it gives rise to increase in the temperature but now as the gases are increased the temperature will also increase this is only what we call as global warming what is the meaning of global warming children rise of the temperature of the earth ok rise of the temperature of the earth and why it is happening children due to the greenhouse gases what does the greenhouse gases do these gases trap the sun's heat ok and do not allow the heat to uh, be the part of the atmosphere. Hmm? So, again gist of the answer children there are certain gases which are known as greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, methane what all these gases do children these gases traps the sun's heat which is very very important for us also why because when the sun's heat is being trapped it increases the temperature of the earth and that is the reason we are able to uh, be alive or else our earth will become very cool ok we will not be able to survive because in the daytime sun will be there but at the daytime what it, the temperature difference between the uh, night and the day will increase ok days will be hot and nights will be very very cool it will become difficult for us to survive ok but when these gases are increased due to pollution what is happening the the sun's heat is being trapped more when more sun's heat is being trapped then it is giving rise to increase in temperature of the surface of the earth and what it is called as children the increase in the temperature of the earth is only global warming so greenhouse gases give rise to greenhouse gases give rise to what children global warming ok so this is about question number 8 so I will write here the answer number 8 greenhouse gases has greenhouse gases have tendency oh tendency to trap the sun's heat The, this feature is very useful for us as the temperature of the earth increases it helps in survival of the different lives
but when these gases increases it give rise to global warming okay so the gases like carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide methane are green house gases okay and what is global warming children the increase in the temperature of the earth is called as global warming okay so uh, i'll just read the question uh, uh, not question read the answer so greenhouse is the greenhouse greenhouse gases have tendency to trap the sun's heat this feature is very useful for us as the temperature of the earth increases it helps in survival of the different lives okay but when these gases increases it give rise to global warming the gases like carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide and methane are greenhouse gases the increase in the temperature of the earth is called as global warming okay so these gases carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide okay methane okay so what these gases are doing children these gases are trapping the sun's heat okay these are trapping sun's heat okay this trapping of sun's heat is very very important because if this heat won't be there then the temperature of the earth will be very very less and he won't be able to survive okay but when these gases increases then the amount of heat which is absorbed by these gases will also increase okay when the what is happening when the gases are increased the amount of heat will also be increased because these gases will absorb more heat okay so if ga gases are there gases will absorb the heat if gases will increase the heat will also increase because gases are absorbing the heat okay so this uh, process of increase in the temperature of the earth is known as global warming and which gases are the glo uh, greenhouse gases are in carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide even water vapor and methane these gases are what gases are in these are greenhouse gases okay so this was our answer number 8 now we'll talk about question number 9th children so where is question number 9th prepare a brief speech on global warming you have to deliver the speech in your class obviously this you will prepare and uh, i have helped you in preparing okay if you go through this thing uh, so it will be quite easy for you to prepare this answer okay so now we'll talk about the question number 10 so before discussing question number 10 please note this down so that i can rub the blackboard now we'll talk about the next question children so it is question number 10 describe the threat to the beauty of the taj mahal okay describe the threat 
to the beauty of the Taj Mahal. See, the biggest threat is acid rain, isn't it? See, actually, uh, what acid rain, uh, how the acid rain is affecting, affecting Taj Mahal? Actually, you know, uh, this acid rain, it corrodes the marble. What is the meaning of corroding? It reacts with the marble and that some white that marble comes out as a powder, you know and get washed away with the rain that means it is getting corroded. And one more thing is there children, the uh, factories which are just nearby the Taj Mahal, nearby it does not mean very near to that, but it is there in Agra. These refineries also releases certain chemicals, okay. These also releases certain soot chemicals, uh, soot particles you know, certain chemicals. So, these are also responsible for the yellowing of the marble of the Taj Mahal. Actually, actually you know uh, what is that children? See, if you have to start the answer, if you have to write this answer, you will have to mention what is the meaning of acid rain, okay. Again, just now we have discussed and so I won't be writing it over here, but if this question comes in the exam that what is the, what was the question? Describe the threat to the beauty of the Taj Mahal. Then first of all you need to describe what is the meaning of acid rain. So, how you will describe that due to the burning of the fossil fuels like petrol, diesel and coal oxides are being released into the atmosphere. These oxides get dissolved into the rain water and it comes down along with the rain, okay. These uh, oxides get dissolved in the rain water and comes down on the surface of the earth. Now, this is known as acid rain. This acid rain or the acid rain is very very corrosive. It not only damages the cra uh, crops, but it also corrodes the monuments, especially the monuments which are being made by the marble. And now you will start, Taj Mahal is also one of the monument which is being made by the marble and acid rain corrodes the marble that means it reacts with the marble and uh, it comes out, marble comes out as a white powder which get washed away along with the rain water, uh, water ok not water, water ok. It get comes out, uh, it get washed away with the rain water and then what is happening children? Then one more threat is there children that is from what the soot which the particles ok carbon particles which are being coming which is coming out from the refineries, which refineries? The refineries which is present just nearby to the um, you know Mathura refineries and all this thing. Uh, so, it is again uh, what what is what is the effect children? The white marble is getting converted into the yellow marble, ok. So, that uh, color is being the color is changing, ok. That is the reason the government has you know shifted the um, these industries out of the town and even the uh, lead free petrol is being used mostly. I do not know how many people use, but it is being mostly used over there so that the beauty of the Taj Mahal can be prevented and protected, ok. So, let us write the, let us talk and I will write the answer number, what is the question number? Question number, answer number, what is the question number? So, question number is 10, ok. So, question number 10, so answer number 10. What was the question? Describe the threat to the beauty of the Taj Mahal. So, acid rain is the biggest threat for the Taj Mahal ok. Why is it biggest threat children? As acid rain reacts with marble which comes out as 
as white powder and get washed away with the rain water okay then again few factories capital letter will come few refineries and chemical factories okay few chemical and oil factories are also a threat for Taj Mahal as the suit which comes out from these factories is responsible for the yellowing of the Taj Mahal. Okay children, so just we will read about this, what is this, what we have, what I have written, acid rain is the biggest threat for the Taj Mahal, as acid rain reacts with marble which comes out as white powder and get washed away with the rain water, that means corrosion, corroding of marble, few chemical and oil factories are also a threat for Taj Mahal, as the suit which comes out from these factories is responsible for the yellowing of the Taj Mahal. As I told you earlier that if you start this answer, how it is to be started? You have to write a definition of the acid rain and then uh, one or two lines about the you know, effects of the acid rain and then you will come to the effects or how does it affect the Taj Mahal. Okay? Directly you will not write this, but as uh, what is the case written? Just now we have discussed acid rain, is not it? We have written the, uh, uh, I have written the answer on the blackboard. So, I have not written the definition of the acid rain over here, but you need to write the definition and you need to elaborate, you know write two more, two to three more lines over that, uh, which you have written in the uh, question just before this. Okay? So, this was about the question number 10, uh, question number 10 was describe the threat to the beauty of the Taj Mahal children, why is it be, uh, why is it a threat? Because the walls are being corroded, the marble is becoming thinner okay? and it is also getting yellow because of the uh, chemical factories and the refineries which are situated in the nearby areas. Okay? So, this was question number 10. Now, we will talk about the answer number 11 or the question number 11. So, what is the question number 11? Let me read. Question number 11 is why does the increased level of nutrients, okay? why does the increased level of nutrients in the water affect the survival of aquatic organism? If you remember, we have discussed this thing in the chapter also. What is this children? It is known as eutrophication or eutrophication. What does it mean children? See, when the water from the farms uh, get mixed up with the water body, okay? it contains fertilizers. Okay? Now, these fertilizers or the manures, okay, it helps in the growth of the algae as it contains lots of nutrients. See, the water which is coming from the farm, it has the traces of fertilizers and the manure. When this water which is coming from the farm get mixed up with the main water bodies, 
okay maybe due to rain or storm or any other reason then when this water get mixed up with the river water what is here in this the water which is coming from the farm it has got fertilizers and manure definitely it is very very good for the growth of the alga so when this water get mixed up with the water bodies the growth of the alga get increased okay it is also known as a bloom of alga so the whole surface of the uh, lake or river whatever you say it get covered with the alga okay now when this alga dies so decomposers decomposers will come into action now when this decomposers will decompose the alga what they'll be using they'll be definitely using oxygen so much of alga has to be decomposed now in decomposition of so much of alga decomposers will be using large amount of oxygen and when large amount of oxygen is being used so what will happen children the oxygen which get which is there in the water dissolve the dissolved state okay so uh, obviously the amount of oxygen will be lesser in the water in dissolved state so then there like you know the oxygen is consumed by the decomposers and thus the aquatic animals do not get proper oxygen and again they die okay this is known as eutrophication so what is the question children what was the question why does the increased level of nutrients in the water affect the survival of aquatic organism so this is how it affects the uh, survival of aquatic organism because when the water comes from the farm it contains lots of uh, nutrients okay because it contains fertilizers and manure now this water give rise to a, a, uh, you know uh, growth of alga now when the alga dies decomposers comes into action decomposers use oxygen and thus the oxygen is being utilized by the decomposers and aquatic animals do not get oxygen in the proper amount and thus their life comes in danger and many aquatic animals actually die also isn't it so this is how it affects the aquatic organism so i'll just write the answer children answer number 11 i'll just read the question once again why does the increased level of nutrients in the water affect the survival of the aquatic organism so the water which comes from the farms contains fertilizers and manure and it give rise to growth of alga in the water body when alga dies it is decomposed by decomposers okay who uses much of the oxygen dissolved in water does aquatic life or organism do not get proper amount of oxygen and 
die. Okay, somehow I managed to finish this answer in this limited space children. Okay, so just now I have explained you how the uh, fertilizers and manures when they reaches the water bodies affect the uh, aquatic organism. Why? Because these have lot of nutrients isn't it? Here you can add lot of things that it contains fertilizers and manure contains lots of nutrients isn't it? So, that is the reason it give rise to growth of alga and when alga dies it decomposes has to decompose, decompose the alga and when this alga is decomposed by the decomposers in doing this decomposers use lot of oxygen which is dissolved in water and then what is happening children? Then the amount of oxygen get reduced in the water and so aquatic animals do not get proper amount of oxygen and thus they die ok. So, this was all about the question answers. So, probably this was the last question of the NCRT. So, that is all with the question answers hope you all have understood this lesson very very properly and you will be able to solve all the question answers uh, which are given in some other books also ok. Thank you.